Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. Today I'm excited to be sharing with you this beautiful advent calendar from the brand Pintu. Thank you so much to Pintu for very kindly sending this my way. I'm definitely super excited to be trying this out. And if you aren't familiar with the brand Pintu, they tend to be known for their plastic puzzles. So they have uh, lots of beautiful designs, but all of them are made with plastic pieces. The pieces tend to be kind of semi-hard or rigid with like maybe a bit of give, but they all snap together very satisfyingly. And once they're together, they just stay together. So you don't need any glue or anything like that. So it makes it really easy to um, put them together if you want to put them on display. And they also do plastic frames that match with different puzzles as well. So yeah, really cool. And so with this advent calendar, there's 24 days, uh, which I think is pretty common with most advent calendars. And for each day, there is a some sort of like mini puzzle, I believe, which will be made out of plastic. So yeah, I think that'll be really fun. Although unlike a normal advent calendar where you open uh, one sort of like box or surprise per day, um, I'm going to be binging this one. So first up, we're going to have a quick look at the packaging and sort of I guess unbox this, open up all the days, pull out all the goodies, have a look at what they are, and of course, uh, get into some puzzling. So I think this could take a while. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's take a look at the outside of the book before we open it up. So the cover has this lovely rich red with this beautiful gold foiling detail, lovely border and cute little pine needles and swirly designs. Then we've got a lovely image in the middle of this uh, decorated Christmas tree in the, you know, sort of snowscape with the mountains and pine trees and a cute little cottage with their uh, fire going. Um, and it says, I'm not sure what this is, it says AR1001, so I don't know what that means, doesn't have any meaning to me. But if you know, let me know, but I don't think I'm missing anything there. But it says since 2023, then we've got the Star Chaser, which is the name of this Christmas puzzle advent calendar. Before you open this magical book, please remember to open only one box per day to avoid losing control of the magic. Uh, oops, sorry Pintu, but we're going to be binging this one today. And now it's time to begin. And then let's take a look at the sides. So you've probably seen already that the sides have these sort of like fake kind of pages to make it look like a, a proper book. So that's kind of cute. So I've got that on all, the, all three sides. And then on the spine we have, um, oh, hopefully that's straight enough. We do have a bit more detail, got this lovely sort of argyle pattern bit more lovely gold foiling here and it's got Star Chaser Puzzle Advent Calendar Pintu Corporation and then let's look at the back so we do have a bit more of an ornate border no gold foiling though and then we have a little picture with a blurb here we've got little hands holding puzzles and a Christmas star that says dear friends it's that time of the year looking for a unique way to count to count down Pintu's Christmas Puzzle Advent Calendar is sure to delight Discover new possibilities that come to life. Enjoy the one of a kind puzzle experience, free up your mind, relax and enjoy. And then down here, we just sort of have uh, stuff that's not super interesting to us, just a bit about the company, what things are made from, the sort of warning choking hazard and like barcode, that sort of thing. So the inside of the book is looking really gorgeous. There's lots of lovely illustrations that look a bit sort of old fashioned. They sort of look very like sketched or etched and yeah, they're just really pretty. And we have a QR code here, which says scan this code to get images of the puzzles, assembly instructions and full story of the game. So I did scan this and it pops up part of the Pintu website, which has yeah a bit more of the story and then has like a colored box for each day. Um, I'll pop a screen recording up if I can. Um, yeah, and you, when you click on each day, it sort of takes you to assembly instructions if there are some for that particular whatever object you get, but also if there's more to the story related to that particular day or object uh, it gives you a bit more story there as well so yeah it's sort of a nice uh, add-on there that you know if in case you do need help assembling anything you've got those instructions or diagrams there so yeah and just a nice sort of comprehensive story um, and then speaking of the story we have the sort of main story here so it says Pintu is a magical kingdom with an ancient Christmas tree at its center and at the top of the tree, there is a shining magic star that has illuminated the entire kingdom and maintained the magic, magic of it. However, something weird has happened. The magic star that usually shines above the tree has broken into six pieces and scattered across the kingdom. Dear adventurer, we need your help to retrieve each piece of the star, restore our tree to its former glory and save our kingdom. Will you accept this mission? 
So yeah, that's the sort of story or theme running through this advent calendar. And so, yeah, I believe uh, since the star is broken into six pieces, some of the items in this advent calendar are going to be to, I guess, help restore that star. So they might be these sort of gems or star shards here. It says one of six. And then down here we've got like two of six, a little, another one here, three of six, four of six, five of six, and six of six. So yeah, that looks like those ones might be to do with that story. So now that we've had a bit of a look on the inside as well, I think it's time to sort of get stuck into this. So what I'm planning to do is, since we're binging this, pop open everything on this page and pull out all the contents and try and put in some sort of order so I remember what's one to 12. Um, and then if there's anything of interest or anything to note, I'll quickly pop in and uh, show you or tell you about it. And then we can go into this side and do the same thing. And then I'll be putting everything together and at the very end, have a closer look at all the things we got and try and figure out putting this magic star back together and see if we can restore the kingdom of Pintu. So yeah, I think that will be fun. So uh, let's get into unpacking this side of the advent calendar. Okay, so I've uh, ripped open this side of the advent calendar. It's a bit of a pity that I sort of had to rip them open, but I guess that's the nature of these things. And I've got all my goodies here from this side. Um, yeah, and then on the reverse of each uh, little flap or door is sort of part of the story or uh, yeah, kind of tells you something about that day. But I believe it's sort of the same information that's on the website when you sort of scan the QR code and go there and look at each day there. I think it's the sort of same info. Um, but yeah, this one here, it says, I won't read them all, I'll just read a few. It says, uh, this is a photo taken by a villager, which I have printed out as a postcard to give you some clues that may help you find the missing star. You can write down your wishes on the postcard and we'll do our best to make your dreams come true. And of course, bad wishes not allowed. And it just says, again, you can scan the QR code for some more of the story and assembly instructions. Um, and then here we've got like day four, it says, I mean, day two, three, they all have something written on them. Um, but yeah, day four, uh, this is the fragment that fell at the scene after the incident. It may help you find the other fragments. And then what else? Um, yeah, like all sorts of things, like a conversation with someone and sort of like a little uh, description of like, you know, arriving at the Christmas market. Yeah, it sort of, sort of takes you on a little journey or an adventure, but yeah, I won't read everything. Um, but yeah, really kind of cute and nicely done. Nice little touch to have something written in there. Anyway, let's look at this sort of exciting stuff here, although it might just look like a bit of a jumble. So day one, we have, I guess, well, they said we get a postcard. So it's a plastic, so pin to have plastic puzzles. So this is a plastic puzzle piece, but it looks like it makes up your postcard image and looks like it's an actual sort of postcard on the back. So yeah, that's our day one. And then day two, actually, I'll just hold this up. Hopefully you can see that. So it probably doesn't look like a lot right now, just a bunch of puzzle pieces, but they are double-sided. So one side sort of like a, looks like a glossy image and the other side is like, looks like it's a postcard. I can sort of see the stamp markings. Then day two, I believe is like a little magnet, sort of doesn't, again, doesn't look like much, but don't worry, I'll sort of show you. You'll see me put them together and I'll show you the finished product at the end. But yeah, it sort of looks like a little magnet with a frame and a little plastic puzzle that goes in there. And it looks like we've sort of got the same kind of thing, but a different image for the next day, which is day three. And then day four, which is the one that I talked about, the fragment of the star, looks like we have our first sort of little clue or fragment there, which is these really teeny tiny plastic puzzle pieces. I don't know if you can see that, but like there's my fingernail and there's a piece of puzzle, it's so tiny. Oh my God, how am I gonna put this together? I don't know, uh, but very cute. And then we have here what looks like maybe a key ring. You can sort of see the key chain there. So that'll be interesting to see 
looks like it, the pieces look a bit curved as well. So I think we're going to have like a little ball keychain. So that looks fun. And then here we've got like what looks like a luggage tag. So we've got this little black kind of tag bit, which has pin to, which looks like something you put on your suitcase or backpack or something. And then it looks, came with these puzzle pieces, which look like a little sort of ticket or tag as well. Hopefully you can see this again. And it looks like I can see here like a dress with dotted lines. So I guess you might be able to write on this. But yeah, again, all plastic pieces, looks really cute. So I guess this little name tag goes inside your little black tag here. So it looks like some of these you can definitely use or are actually kind of a little a bit practical. So that's pretty cool. And then, um, so that was like, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, day seven. Looks like we might have another little puzzle here with teeny tiny pieces as well, but it looks like maybe it's got a stand. So maybe it's a little image that goes on a stand. So that'll be fun to see what that image is. And then it looks like, what are we up to? Day eight, I think. Um, same sort of thing. So yeah. And then, Day nine, it looks like we might have another key round sort of keychain thing here or a ball keychain. So again, we'll see what that ends up being. This looks like another one of those uh, fragments of the star puzzles, again, with the tiny pieces. So that, yeah, looks similar to the one from over here. So they look pretty similar. Hopefully I haven't just mixed those up. <laughs> Um, and then, oof, this one's a big one. Okay, this, I do not know what this is, but it looks kind of massive. So we've got these black frame kind of bits, even with like an adhesive in there. Looks very interesting. And it came with these sort of bigger kind of plastic sections. Looks like a road or something in the image there and cars. So yeah, and I don't know, some sort of interesting pieces going on there. So I don't know what that's gonna make. Um, but I am intrigued and interested to find out. So mm, stay tuned. And then for day 12, it looks like another little magnet, but this time it's a round one. So yeah, it looks cute little puzzle magnet and frame. So that's everything from that side. Um, I'm gonna move these out of the way and then I will open up this side and we'll have a quick look at what I got in there as well. So I've just undone everything on this side and uh, yeah, the, all the flaps also have uh, more of the story continuing and things that are going on and more about the sort of finding the different shards of the star, that sort of thing. But yeah, so that's nice. And I've got all my goodies here. Uh, it definitely just seems like a lot of stuff. So for day 13, looks like we've got another little round oop, uh, kind of magnet frame puzzle here. So that looks cool. It almost looks a bit translucent as well, so that's sort of interesting. And then we have another for day 14. I think this is another sort of part of the shard or the shard of the star. So another little puzzle there. Then for day 15, it looks like we had another one of these sort of little um, puzzles with a stand. So I guess it makes like a picture that sits on this little stand. So that'll be fun to see what that is. No idea what the picture is. So we're going, yeah, we're going, uh, a lot of these are gonna be a bit mysterious, so that's sort of part of the fun. And then what are we up to? I don't know, oh, okay, this one, uh, day 16, which was interesting because here it actually says, it has a little flag, it has number one, it says 30 pieces, and then there's another flag over on this side, which says number two. So I think this might be like part one of something, and it looks, it's got these sort of larger plastic pieces, but they're all a bit curved, so I'm guessing it makes some sort of dome, and they look a bit translucent, so that's, cool and then we have another little i think what day were you oh my god i've lost track oh 17 yeah okay that was another one of these little parts of the star and then day 18 oh there's a lot to keep track of so day 18 is interesting we've got what looks like a little frame and a little artist easel and we've got another little puzzle here. So I guess this pops into the frame and then the easel part sort of stands it up or something. So that's cute. And then, where are we up to? 19, I think, yep, is another part of the star. One of those, I think like I'm guessing all of these 
sort of shards of the star or parts of the star are gonna join together as one big puzzle or something like that. So, but we'll see. And then the next one, number 20, I think it was. Again, another little stand. And I guess we make a little image that will go on the stand. And then interestingly, I think it was 21. Yeah, 21. Also seems to have, I think, number six or six, it says here. So the last uh, shard of the star or star fragment, I think that's what they call it. But it also came with this little, I guess, round base. So I'm thinking that once all the fragments fit together as one puzzle, they can slip into this little slit here and you can stand it up because it's sort of got a bit of weight to this, like a little bit of a paperweight style thing. So that's my guess, like a little picture holder. So that's kind of interesting. And then what did we get up to? Uh, 22, right. Again, we have another little sort of frame and like easel kind of stand and then I guess another little picture that we're going to make up here with all these cute little plastic puzzle pieces. And then here's that part two on that little flag there. So again, it looks like we've got little, well, bigger plastic pieces that are a bit curved. So I guess making the second half of like this globe or dome or something. But uh, it's kind of interesting because then the last day, day 24, has quite a bit of stuff in it. So we have, it looks like a little power cable or like a USB plug. Hmm, interesting, very mysterious. And then some other little sort of plastic components here, which connect to that. And there's a bit where the plug goes into. So, hmm, interesting. Um, so yeah, I think that goes with something. So like the base of something, maybe this globe or something like that, I guess we'll find out. And there was also this really cute little um, pin in there as well. If you can see that cute little like little pin and it's like a miniature version of this book and it says Pintu 2023 Xmas a little star on it. So that's very cute like a little collectible pin and we also got a little I'm just going to cover the QR code um, a little sort of discount voucher there. So congratulations. I uh, hope you enjoy the puzzle journey. Santa has a an extra 40% off waiting for you. Scan the QR code here to get the gift now. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll check that out. I don't know if I can use it being here in Australia or if it's just something for North America. But I don't know if it goes to the Amazon. Um, if I remember to look it up, I'll let you know. But yeah, so that is everything. So I think that's pretty much all I have to say for now. I think we're going to get into the extra exciting bit now and I am going to uh, binge as many of these as I can and try and complete them all. And then, um, yeah, I plan to come back and show you what everything has turned into and we can have a closer look at everything and figure out what all these mysterious bits and pieces are and what all the uh, sort of mystery images turn out to be. So that's exciting. So I guess without further ado, let's get into puzzling.
I'm back and I've managed to finish everything from the advent calendar. So I've actually got everything around me, even though you can't see it. So let's just go through everything. It may not be in the exact same order uh, as the days, but I don't think that matters too much now. So first up, which I think actually was day one, we've got this lovely sort of Christmas scene uh, postcard puzzle. So it's lovely and glossy on the front. And yeah, it's got this beautiful sort of, I guess, snowy Christmas village. And it's got a little bit of text that says, uh, may the peace and joy of Christmas be with you. And I say it's a postcard because when you turn it over, you've got a nice little postcard design there. It looks very cute and uh, retro or vintage. And you might even be able to write on this, I think. It's got like room for, you know, a name and address. And I guess you could write something to a friend or I think, what did it say in the advent calendar that you can, you know, put your Christmas wishes or your wishes here. So yeah, very cute. So I thought that was nice. And then we have a couple of magnets, uh, square magnets. So again, I can't, this might've been days two and three, but yeah, I guess this is what meant to be Mary and Joseph and I guess baby Jesus. But anyway, this is, yeah, a cute little puzzle magnet. So you've got your magnet there and um, yeah, you can just built it into this little frame and it's actually a little bit transparent, like the sky, hopefully you can see that the sky is transparent and it looks, has a very sort of stained glass kind of look about it. But yeah, very cute and yeah, sort of nice. You can actually, I like that you can actually use some of these things. So yeah, I thought that was very cute and colorful. So that's the first one. And then the second one, I think this is meant to be the is it three kings or three wise men. But yeah, I thought that was a really nice one as well. With, again, with that sort of stained glass look. And then we have a couple of other magnets here. We've got round ones. I can't recall again what day these are from. Um, these, like the other ones, um, they got the little, I guess, magnet on the back and they had a little sort of frame that you built plastic pieces into. And yeah, again, very sturdy and strong, durable. Uh, but yeah, it's sort of it's quite a cute little image. But yeah, I thought that was nice. And then this other magnet here, again, a bit of a transparent background, again, with the sort of stained glass look. I thought that was a nice one too. And then, uh, what do I do next? Okay, we've got a couple of key rings here. So I thought these were kind of nifty and cute. So you, you have the little keychain that hooks onto this uh, little bit that went into this ball and the ball's made up of, yeah, plastic jigsaw pieces that all have a bit of a curvature to them. And okay, so this one has like uh, the picture on it. It's sort of like, I guess a street scene, like there's a car and there's like lots of little people just, there's a Santa, there's people sort of chatting with each other, walking, someone with a Santa hat on, there's a Christmas tree. All right, let's see. I'm going to hold it up. Ooh, hello. Um, I don't know if it's in focus. I'll just sort of turn it around. Ooh, I don't know if you're able to see this because their people are pretty tiny. But yeah, it's got, you see a little car there? But yeah, it's got all sorts of people doing things, a mum and her kid there. Looks like a teacher with kids there. But yeah, it's sort of, it's pretty cute. And yeah, and some of them have got Santa hats. And yeah, and there's um Santa there, I think. So I don't know how much of this you're going to be able to see. It's hard for me to tell if this is in focus. I hope it is. Um, but yeah, I thought that was cool. And speaking of cool, we have another... Um, we have a stay cool little round key ring here. So again, it came with the nice keychain, and yeah, you just sort of built 
these sort of curved little plastic pieces around the little bit at the top that holds the that connects to the chain so yeah this one's got this fun like snowman face with his little carrot nose and then it looks like he's uh got a he's melting maybe and it just says stay cool um yeah and then that's pretty much it but i thought i liked that one i thought it was cute so that's fun Ooh. and then we have um this was like sort of two parts so it's just a sort of silicon rubbery luggage tag and with a bit of a stretchy like cord there so you can put that on a backpack or a suitcase i guess and yeah the puzzle was um this little plastic tag inside it says new adventure and it's got name telephone address so yeah you could actually i guess write on that as well with a marker or something maybe a biro i don't know but yeah it's cute it's got a bit of a retro look to it looks like an old ticket or something but yeah it just sort of slipped i guess i can show you yeah it just sort of whoop, came like this and then i just uh popped it in to the case but i'm not going to do that now and just plain on that side but yeah that was cute again a nice little like thing that you could actually use if you wanted so yeah it's kind of cool having uh things that are useful or that you could sort of even give away as gifts to people if you want um and so next i've got a couple little mini puzzles here which were fun and cute so they came with this a couple bits of sort of cardboard and then the cardboard bits just kind of slip together like that and then you have a little little stand and then these pieces, my goodness, they were so tiny. I don't know if you can see that. So they were a bit tricky to pick up again with sausage fingers and even with like fake nails. They were like a bit, sometimes tweezers might've helped. But anyway, this one is a funny little image. It says, nah, winter is too cold, is too cold for me. And it looks like a very buff tanned Santa in his Rudolph the reindeer, uh, like swimming floaty. But yeah, that kind of just, it's I guess yeah pretty sturdy little image and yeah you can just sit it on your little cardboard stand like that so that's pretty cute so that's pretty fun and then there was another one of these actually there were a few of these so again just came with the cardboard stand and this one also has a very uh maybe it's the same Santa in a different outfit Looks like he's in Hawaii or something. It says quiet quitting, which I'm not quite sure what that means. But anyway, so that's pretty fun. Very random, very cute. Um, but yeah, fun. That's the main thing. Um, I've got a couple others, but um, I'll show those to you in a bit just because they're on the other side of my board here. So next we have we've got a couple of these. So um, there was a puzzle that came with like a little plastic frame and a little plastic easel for it to sit on. So this puzzle had slightly bigger pieces than those other little ones, but still pretty small. And um, this one is just a, oh, I keep, sorry, I keep um, going out of the frame. This has got a bit of a glossy finish. And yeah, and it, it just, this, this sort of puzzle just pops into this frame. So it just clicked in. So yeah, again, no glue at all. So very cool. And it just, um, whoop. Can I get it to sit on here? It just literally just sits there. So yeah, again, I guess you can just pop it on display for Christmas or on your desk or something, whatever you want. But yeah, that's pretty fun. A lot of these images are like quite random, but they they seem pretty fun and silly. And then we had another one of these. So this one's sort of a brownie maroon color. Um, and yeah, I really like this one. This is probably one of my favorite ones, actually. I like the image. It's got a real um, kind of cute, whimsical, retro look to it. But yeah, I think it's really cute. <laughs> so, and just bizarre. And again, you can just pop this open and sit it on there. So yeah, very cute. All right. And let's see, we've got a few more things to go. Um, let's have a look at this thing. So this thing was quite interesting and I actually had to get a bit of help assembling this. So this is, so for the most part, I didn't really need to look at the assembly instructions for these. A lot were pretty straightforward. I could sort of figure it out myself, but this one was actually a bit tricky. So how do I explain this? Basically, it's almost like 
a little plastic canvas box that you can just like it comes with it's got like a little bit here that you can attach this hook on and it, they even give you a bit of adhesive so you could put like the adhesive on the hook and then and then it can just like hang on to your wall or something like that or you could even just hang this little bit here onto a hook anyway enough rambling but um basically yeah, it was quite interesting design this because this is all plastic puzzle pieces and so was this and it all was one sh basically formed as one flat sheet but then we had these sort of plastic frame bits in and the sides even though it's plastic we're actually able to fold up like origami and bend over so it went from yeah flat to the edges being bent bent up and over so really interesting and clever and they didn't break or anything like that very like strong but also bendy at the same time so yeah really interesting I guess engineering there I don't know how they think to make this and it's extremely sturdy and very strong anyway I should probably show you what the actual picture is oh can I get that in focus and in frame so it's a lovely sort of what looks like a kind of town square Christmas market so we've got the lovely tree um, all lit up with the beautiful star and decorations and then it looks like we've got little kind of Christmas market stalls here probably selling food drinks and trinkets and the image like wraps around the sides as well so you can kind of so yeah really interesting sort of little decorative piece that they made here never really seen anything like it like I've seen actual canvases like this where they they wrap around sides but I've never seen a plastic one so yeah I thought that was quite lovely and would make a nice little display piece so pretty cool yeah interesting all right a few more things to go um so we do have another couple of these little guys here where we've got the little cardboard stand and so this one is definitely more Christmassy um it's a it's a fun little image here so again with the teeny weeny pieces it says oh shoot I'm late so yeah, that's cute nice little Christmas one there all right and then we have another one of those here's our little stand and this one's interesting it says oh dear where are my reindeers and whoop. but yeah quite a fun cute one there whoop. oh no I've my stand has fallen apart. That's okay, we'll fix that later. All right, and now we get down to some even more interesting slash exciting bits. So one thing that I thought was quite a really cool and I guess a big ticket item in this advent calendar was this kind of little globe, which actually lights up. So yeah, again, it's all made up of these curved um, pieces and the top's actually sort of translucent or transparent blue and it has lots of little cute stars in here and it's got a really nice little scene going on and the bottom here this is actually a light that like clicks Let's see if I can yeah so we've got a hole in here but this little light clicks into it and it's got a little uh, gap little bit here to put your plug in which it did come with so that's pretty cool anyway I'll put that back in but let's try and have a look at this little scene here. Okay, so yeah, again, it looks like a lovely little village or something and everyone's out. Um, I guess it's nighttime because we've got the dark blue sky with stars. People seem to be out and about, like maybe in a park or something in the snow. And we've got a Christmas tree here. It looks like a Ferris wheel there. And yeah, people sitting on a bench, another sort of Christmas tree. Yeah, it's really cute. I think people are ice skating here on a lake, like a frozen lake there. So yeah, is that another Christmas tree? Yes. I guess they've decorated up all the trees, but yeah, it's really lovely. Has lots of details on it. Um, yeah, so let's actually plug it in. It also comes with this little, oops, plastic stand here, which you can just sit it on, but Here's my handy dandy cable that it came with that I've prepared earlier. I am back. I just had a slight technical difficulty there, but I think we've figured out how this works. So yes, plug it in and it lights up and that's really cute. So I think that's a really cool item and I think that will look really cute, I guess, yeah, on display, on your desk, 
wherever you want, I guess. But yeah, that'll be really fun. And we could have it as a little night light. And yeah, you can just, I don't know, it just comes with this, I guess, presumably a stand that you just pop it on. I mean, you probably don't have to put it on that, but I guess if you want it raised up a bit. But yeah, I just thought that was really neat and cool. And I definitely wasn't expecting anything so, I don't know, like fancy, I guess. And I feel like all of these, even if they're just little plastic puzzles and things, they do seem to be quite well made. So yeah, oh, I didn't realize it. Okay, maybe that is a thing. I don't know if it's supposed to do that, but it does. And that's, and now I can't stop playing with it. Huh, okay. Hmm. I haven't actually looked up the instructions on this. Maybe I should. I don't know if it'll say anything about that, but I don't know if it's meant to do that, but there you go. It does. So yeah. So anyway, I'll unplug that. But yeah, I thought that was very cool. Um, really interesting and very pleased with like the quality so far of everything. Now that I've shown you all that, I'm now going to show you all six shards of the star or was it star fragments. So um, over, there were six, I guess, days throughout the advent calendar and each one of those had like a different piece of this puzzle. So we'll just lay them all out here and we'll pop it together in a sec. Um, yeah, and these were like, let's see if we can find one that's easy to see. They're very, very tiny pieces. I think they're the same size as these actually, yeah, so same size, but very teeny tiny. Um, and I actually did find these difficult to put together because as you can probably see looking at them, they're very darkly colored. So it was quite hard seeing the teeny tiny like decorations on them and and just like differentiating. But actually that being said, I didn't have any false fits and I found that to be the case with Pintu puzzles. Like all their stuff that I've done, I've never really had a problem with false fits. They seem to have a really unique, like even though the pieces seem to be traditional, like kind of ribbon cut, they seem to have quite a unique fit to them. So yeah, I don't know how they work out, how they make this magic, but yeah, I'm pretty impressed with that. So let's, uh, yeah, let's pop these together and then we can look at the image as a whole. Oh gosh, this feels really... Sometimes I found with these as well, like they're very sturdy, um, but sometimes, and most of the time they go together pretty easily, the pieces, um, but sometimes you have to do have to press a bit and get them to click in place. Or sometimes you have to try, if you put one on top of the other and it doesn't quite fit, if you undo it and go the other way, it would fit better. I'm not, I don't know if I'm explaining that very clearly, but if you've done a pin two puzzle before, you probably get what I mean. Anyway, that seemed to go together and it feels pretty flush. I've also, um, I don't, don't know if you can see, but I was using this board to assemble everything and there's all these little dents in it now from doing all these little puzzles and pressing the plastic together. So, uh, so oops. Okay, this looks like that goes there. There we go. I do like that snapping sound of these like plastic pieces. It's very satisfying. Yeah, and the other cool thing about uh, pin two puzzles is you don't have to worry if you spill your drink on them because they're plastic and you can just wipe them clean. So that's pretty cool. All right, so that's cool. And then getting there. That one didn't click so much, but it seemed to seems to still be all in all together and our last piece Ugh. okay this one does feel a little bit more tricky yeah and sometimes um, actually pressing down from the back side of these seems to work pretty well so there we go all all done so that's looking very pretty. Beautiful uh, image. But yeah, it's a really lovely image. Very pretty. And yeah, and it actually lights up as, I mean, not lights up, it's transparent or, well, translucent. Actually, I've got an idea. 
let's pop our little lamp, uh, lamp on and see if we can have it shine through this puzzle. Can I get it to turn on? I was having a bit of trouble getting this to turn on before. There we go. So, so yeah, that would look pretty cool if you had like a like this in front of a lamp or something, maybe. But yeah, it kind of look like looks nice lit up from behind, or you could put it in uh, front of a window, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, leave that out of the way. Oh, stop turning on. Okay. But anyway, yeah, I just thought this is really lovely. Um, and yeah, and there you go. That's all our, I guess our star is all the fragments of the star have been reunited. But yeah, and you've got this little stand here, so you can actually just slide it in there and then you can, so it looks like that and then you can stand it up. Yeah, so it could be nice to have it standing like in front of a window so the light shines through it or something like that or in front of a lamp at night. Yeah, so I thought, very cool. So that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed opening up each day of the advent calendar, even if I did do it all in one go and just piecing together all these tiny cute little puzzles and making these cute knickknacks. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And like I said earlier, I also really like the sort of blind box aspect to this advent calendar. So first up, you have the surprise of opening up each day in the advent calendar and sort of discovering some little goodie inside. But then uh, I liked that, yeah, I guess all of the puzzles and knickknacks didn't have any reference image. I mean, of course, some of the uh, items did have like diagrams you could refer to, but only if you used the QR code and went to the website. But apart from that, there was no reference image. So you didn't know what your puzzle images are going to look like until you'd built them. So I sort of liked that in anticipation and that extra sort of surprise within this advent calendar. Yeah, I just thought that added like an extra layer of fun. And I also really like that there's a nice sort of mix of both ornamental or display pieces as well as practical pieces amongst this collection of goodies. So you've got, you know, your cute canvas, things in frames, little like uh, pictures on stands, this image here, your postcard, but then you've also got things that you can actually use. So your luggage tag, the keychains, the magnets, of course, and of course, this really cute little lamp. I mean, I don't know if you could really read with the lamp or use it to light up a really big space or anything, but I think it could still be used as a really cute little night light if you wanted. But yeah, otherwise it's great as a display piece as well. So yeah, I just really like that there's that mix. I think it makes it a really nice, I guess really interesting and fun and usable collection. I also really liked that there was a story running through the advent calendar and that each day had a bit more of the story or the adventure that you were going on. So as you worked your way through each day, more of the story was uh, coming to light. And I'm pretty sure that each little item kind of uh, relates to it or it, like is in the theme of that part of the story. So yeah, I think they did a really nice job um, putting this together and a lot of thought went into it and a lot of creativity. So yeah, I think that was a really nice touch. I was also quite pleased with the quality. I thought everything was well made and I liked that all the pieces went together pretty easily. Uh, I mean, there were a few that were a bit more tricky that required a bit more effort to put them together, hence all the uh, indents on my puzzle board. But for the most part, everything went together well and everything looks flush and uh, things fit nicely into their frames and even these sort of round objects fit well together too. And something that did impress me a lot though was that there weren't any false fits at all throughout any of these puzzles, especially this one here that's like very dark and has a lot of the same sorts of colours. I was thinking for sure there'd be false fits, but I didn't find any. So yeah, very pleased with that. As for cons, there isn't really anything too major. It's just more something to note or my thoughts, I guess. So for me, I guess the main thing is because these pieces are so teeny tiny, they can be a little bit finicky or difficult to work with at times, especially if you have sausage fingers or gel nails, they can be tricky to pick up. So it could be worth using like tweezers or something like that. Um, and also because it's so tiny and there's lots of tiny details, uh, if you wear glasses, you probably should wear them while doing this. Don't be like me who forgot to wear their glasses and end up squinting, trying to see all the tiny details. Um, but yeah, you could also, I guess, use a magnifying glass, whatever helps you put these together and makes things fun and easy, I guess. 
So I think that's pretty much everything I had to say about this. Overall, I just had a really fun and positive experience. I really enjoyed piecing together all these cute little uh, puzzles and knickknacks. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And thank you again to Pintu for sending me their beautiful advent calendar to try out. I yeah, really enjoyed it. And uh, fingers crossed that they might put out one for 2024. In the comments below, let me know what you thought of this advent calendar and let me know if you've tried it. And let us know if you've done any other advent calendars for the month of December. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you hit that like button. And for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And you can find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore gb where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.